hard drugs, Western powers, Chinese dynasties, globalization, and so much more defined what we know as the opium wars. Known as the wars which China lost everything they had and fell under the power of Western countries. Our story begins long before the Opium Wars, specifically in 1644, when, after having expelled the Ming Dynasty forces from Beijing, the Manchu warlord Hong Taiji declared the foundation of the Qing Dynasty. Under King's command, the Imperial China achieved a great territorial expansion, as well as improvements in the economic and social spheres. Proof of this golden age are the achievements in art and literature, such as the publication of Dreams of the Red Chamber, one of the most read books of classical Chinese literature. In 1794, the King China was by far the most crowded, the wealthiest and the largest state. So was its power that during the Emperor's Kanji rule, 1661 to 1723, foreign traders were obliged to kneel when the emperor orders were read. Apart from China, another important actor had risen, the British Empire, and on the 17th and 18th century and after the Seven Years' War, which ended with the victory of the British over the French, the East Indian Trading Company obtained the monopoly of the trade a good that was very popular and demand around the world and that generated a big amount of money for the crown. However, in 1772, the Boston Tea Party, which is considered the beginning of the American Revolution, put in danger the hegemony of the English Empire and overnight changed its balance of trade and payments. The consequences were global. Tea was a symbol of the power of the British Empire and the sole supplier of tea at the time was China, whose emperor Qianlong imposed his will to use accept silver as a mean of trade. In addition, with the loss of the American colonies, the British Empire lost its benefits over American cotton's market, an essential product for the Industrial Revolution. So, in the end, Great Britain was suffering from a negative balance of trade. Therefore, in order to reduce the impact of the crisis, English traders introduced opium in the Chinese market. The benefits of opium were that big that in 1836, the East India Trading Company obtained a positive trade balance again. Opium was not important for trade only. This drug also financed the activities of East India Trading Company all around Asia as well as the Industrial Revolution in Richmond. There are three treaties during this period that we would like to focus on, as we believe them to be the most relevant. 1. Treaty of Nanjing The Chinese had been brutally defeated and asked Charles Eliot, representative of UK, for a truce. They actually tried twice. In the first attempt, none of the leaders liked the proposal and refused to negotiate at all. The second time is what we know as the Treaty of Nanking. The Nanking Treaty was signed in 1842, and it was a peace treaty which ended the first opium war between Great Britain and the Qing Dynasty. This treaty clearly favored the British, as its main objective was to end the Canton system in China. The Canton system had been in force since 1769, and had allowed China to control the trade of its own country with Western countries. Great Britain wanted to end it in order to import a limited amount of opium into China. The Nanjing Treaty was composed of 13 articles, which stated the most important conditions, such as China had to pay a huge monetary compensation to Great Britain so to make up for losses made during the war. Hong Kong the center of economic activity of China would become a British territory. China had to establish four ports in which Britain would could trade without any norms. British citizens in China 
stood under British law. This meant that China had no jurisdiction over British people living in its country. And Great Britain could build churches in China and carry out missions to spread Christianity. However, this treaty left several issues unresolved. Ironically, the selling of opium inside of China remained unclear. British merchants had to submit to legal controls during every trade, but there was a loophole whether trading opium was legal activity or not. This matter would later lead to the Second Opium War. The Treaty of Tianjin is another of the unequal treaties and the one which finished with the Second Opium War. The United States and the European powers were increasingly dissatisfied with both the terms of their treaties with China and also because the Qing government was failing to comply with what had been agreed. While the British and French used military power to convince China to accept the new treaty agreements, the US diplomat John Wall achieved through diplomatic negotiations an exchange of treaty ratifications in 1859. Under the most favored nation principle, the US ratification allowed the other powers to take advantage of the treaty provisions of the Treaty of Tianjin. The most important points inside the Treaty of Tianjin were 1. Open more Chinese ports to foreign traders 2. Permit foreign legalizations in the Chinese capital, Beijing 3. Allow Christian missionary activity in the Chinese territory and 4. Legalize the import of opium to Chinese territory Convention of Peking The Convention of Peking is an agreement formed by three treaties signed in 1860 by the Qing Dynasty of China, Great Britain, the French Empire and the Russian Empire. The articles in these treaties stated that Kowloon, Alan in China and all of Hong Kong had to be ceded to the British. Protection for the Christians living in China wanting them extra rice not even the Chinese population had. Parts of Outer Manchuria had to be ceded to the Russian Empire. So, the convention marked the end of the Second Opium War, but it also obliged China to open some of their cities to foreign trade and also made opium legal in the country. In the aftermath of this treaty, the territories taken away of China were ultimately given back except Outer Manchuria, which remains until the present a part of Russia. In summary, the Opium Wars were the burden which destroyed the balance of power between the West and the East. The unequal treaties are the proof of the military superiority of the Western powers, mainly the British one, superiority that was used to achieve favorable commerce goals and, in the process, downgrade an entire country and culture. We can see the domination over the Chinese in the extraordinary rights and privilege given to the Westerns living in the Chinese territories, or the allowance on trade and ports, the freedom of movement for Christian missionaries and the renounce of the territory of Hong Kong. The current role China plays in the international system has been influenced and shaped by the Opium Wars. Nowadays, China is one of the superpowers of the world. Some say that in the near future it could replace the former Soviet Union and be the main enemy for the hegemony of the world before the United States of America. <laughs>